Hello everybody, how y'all doing today? God is a good God. He is a wonderful God. He is the way maker. Dear Heavenly Father, God, we thank you for blessing us with your truth, with your life, and with your understanding. I ask that you just give us your wisdom, Father God, that we may understand your word as we come into your word and gain the, uh, the knowledge that we may be reproved by your word in the mighty name of Jesus. We thank you, Father God, that you have allowed us all to be here on this ministry this day and continue to allow us to see each and every day in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Today, I, I just felt the urge and desire to come into the Word. and um, I'm going to read 1 Timothy chapter 2 and 3. Uh, for some reason, God has put this on my heart like urgently to read. He says in, first, in chapter 2, 1 first, first Timothy, I exhort, therefore, that first of all supplications, prayers, intercessions, and giving of thanks be made for all men, for kings, and for all that are in authority. He said, for all that are in authority. Now, what did he say that we should, uh, all those that are in authority should do? He says, I exhort, therefore, that first of all supplications, prayers, intercessions, and giving of thanks be made for all men, all men, for kings and he said, for all men, for kings, and for all that are in authority, that we may lead a quiet and peaceable life in all godliness and honesty. He said, in godliness and honesty. For this is, a, is good and acceptable in the sight of God our Savior, who will have all men to be saved and to come unto the knowledge of the truth. For there is one God and one mediator between God and men, that's the man, Christ Jesus, who gave himself a ransom for all to be testified in due time, whereunto I am ordained a preacher and an apostle. I speak the truth in Christ, and I lie not. A teacher of the Gentiles in faith and verity, I will therefore that men pray everywhere, lifting up holy hand, without, without, wrath and doubting in like manner also that women adorn themselves in modest apparel with shamefacedness and sobriety not with broidered hair or gold or pearls or costly array but which becometh women professing godliness with good works let the woman learn in silence with all subjection but I suffer not a woman to teach nor usurp authority over the man, but to be in silence. For Adam was first formed, then Eve. And Adam was not deceived, but the woman being deceived was in transgression. Notwithstanding, she shall be saved in childbearing if they continue in faith, charity, and holy, holiness with sobriety. This is a true saying, if a man desired the office of a bishop, he desires a good work. A bishop then must be blameless, the husband of one wife, vigilant, sober, of good behavior, given to hospitality, apt to teach, not given to wine, no striker, not greedy, of filthy lucre, but patience, not a brawler, not covetous. One that ruleth well his own house, having his children in subjection with all gravity. For if a man know not how to rule his own house, how shall he take care of the church of God? Not a novice, lest being lifted up with pride he fall into condemnation of the devil. Moreover, he must have a good report of them which are without, lest he fall into the reproach of the snare of the devil. Likewise must the deacons be grave, not double-tongued, not given to much wine, not greedy of filthy lucre, holding the mystery of faith in a pure conscience. Now understand that Christ Jesus, he, as he was resurrected, he, he, saw, he saw no corruption. And so he says, holding the mystery of the faith in pure conscience. And let these also first be proved. Then let them use the office of a deacon, being found blameless. Even so must their wives be grave, not slanderous, sober, faithful in all things. Let the deacons be the husbands of one wife, ruling their children and their own house well. For they that have used the office of a deacon well purchased to themselves a good degree. 
and great boldness in the faith which is in Christ Jesus. These things write I unto thee, hoping to come unto the sh thee shortly. But if I tarry long, that thou mayest know how thou ought to behave thyself in the house of God, which is the church of the living God, the pillar and the ground of tr the truth. And without controversy, great is the mystery of godliness. God was manifested in the flesh, justified in the spirit, seen of angels, preached unto the Gentiles, believed on in the world, received up into glory. Now, in four, in chapter 4, he goes into telling us, he says, Now the Spirit speaketh expressly, expressly, that in the later times a some shall depart from faith, giving heed to seducing spirits and doctrines of devils. Speaking lies in hypocrisy, having their conscience seared with a hot iron, forbidding to marry, and uh, commanding to abstain from the meats, which God hath created to be received with thanksgiving of them which believe and know the truth. For every creature of God is good, and nothing to be refused, if it be received with thanksgiving. Oh, glory to God, for... It is sanctified by the word of God and prayer. If thou put the brethren in remembrance of these things, thou shalt be a good minister of Jesus Christ, nursed up in the words of faith and of good doctrine, whereunto thou hast attained. But refuse profane and old wives' fables, and exercise thyself rather unto godliness. For boldly exercise for bodily exercise profiteth little, but godliness is profitable unto all things, having promise of the life that is now, and not and of that which is to come. This is a faithful saying and worthy of all acceptation. For therefore we both labor and suffer reproach, but because we trust in the living God, who is our Savior of all men, especially of those that believe. You see that? You did you see how he said that? He said, "For therefore we both labor and suffer reproach, because we trust in the living God, who is the Savior of all men, especially of those that believe." Glory to God! Glory to God! Glory to God! Glory to God! These things command and teach. Let no man despise thy youth. But be thou an example of the believers in word and conversation and charity and spirit and faith and purity till I come give attendance to reading, to exhortion, to doctrine. Neglect not the gift that is in thee, which was given thee by prophecy, with the laying on of hands of the prosperity. Meditate upon these things and give thyself wholly to them that Thy profiting may appear to all. Take heed unto thyself and unto the doctrine. Continue in them. For in doing this, thou shalt both save thyself and them that hear thee. Now in 5 he tells us, he says, Rebuke not an elder, but entreat him as a father, and the younger men as brethren, and the elder women as mothers, and younger sisters, and younger as sisters with all purity. Honor widows that are widows indeed. But if any widow have children or nephews, let them learn first and shoot piety at home and to requite their parents. For that is good and acceptable before God. Now she that is a widow indeed and desolate trusteth in God and, continue, and continueth in the supplication and prayers night and day. But she that liveth in pleasure is dead while she liveth. He said, but she that liveth in pleasure is dead while she liveth. And these things give in charge that they may be blameless. But if any provide not his own, and especially for those of his own house, he hath denied the faith and is worse than an infidel. Mm, see, this is what I was... I, I, I've been asking God about. And he says, But if any provide not for his own, and especially for those of his own house, he hath denied the faith, 
and is worse than an infidel. And so we must provide for our own. And we, we must not rely on anyone else and, or everyone else. Let not a widow be taken into the number under three square years, having been the wife of one man. Well reported for good works, if she have brought up children, if she have lodged strangers, if she has have washed the saints' feet, if she have relieved the afflicted, if she have diligently followed every good work. But the younger widows refuse. And for when they have begun to wax wanton against Christ, they will marry, having damnation because they have cast off their first faith. And with all, they learn to be idle, wandering about from house to house, and not only idle, but tattlers also, and busybodies, speaking things which they ought not. I will therefore that the younger women marry, bear children, guide the house, give none accusation to the adversary to speak reproachfully. For some are already turned aside after Satan. If any man or woman that believeth have widows, let them relieve them, and let not the church be charged, that it may, be, it may relieve them that are widows indeed. Let the elders that rule well be counted worthy of double honor especially they who labor in the word and doctrine. For the scripture said, Thou shalt not muzzle the ox that treadeth out of the corn. And the laborer is worthy of his reward. Against an elder receive not an accusation, but before two or three witnesses. Them that sin rebuke before all, and others also may fear. That others may also fear. I charge thee therefore, I charge thee before God and the Lord Jesus Christ and the elect angels that thou observe these things with preferring one another before another, doing nothing by partiality, laying hands suddenly on no man, neither be partakers of other men's sins. Keep thyself pure, drink no longer water, but use a little wine for the stomach's sake and thine often infirmities. Some men's sins are open beforehand, going before to judgment, and some men's follow after. Hmm. Likewise also, the good works of some are manifest beforehand, and they are otherwise it cannot be hid. And they that are otherwise cannot be hid. Glory to God, and he tells us in First uh, Timothy chapter 6, Let as many servants as are under the yoke account their own masters worthy of honor, that the name of God and his doctrine be not blasphemed. And they that have believed ma believing masters, let them not despise them, because they are brethren, but rather do them service, because they are faithful and beloved partakers of the benefit these things teach and exhort. If any man teach otherwise, and consent not to wholesome words, even the words of our Lord Jesus Christ, and to the doctrine which is according to godliness, he is proud, knowing nothing, but dotting about questions and strifes of words, whereof cometh envy, strife, railings, evil surmissings, sur sur perverse disputings of men of corrupt minds, of destitute of truth, supposing that gain is godliness, from such withdraw thyself. Amen. Dear Heavenly Father, God, we thank you for your holy word. We thank you for your truth. We ask that you just give us the understanding and allow us to overcome the tempter, Father God, in this world. And as you have given us this reward, we know that you have given us the ability to overcome the tempter, Father God. We ask that you destroy it, demolish it within us and around us in the mighty name of Jesus. And let us have the hearts, have your heart, Father God, in the mighty name of Jesus. Not just any heart, but yours. Father God, give us a mind like Christ at all times. Father God, give us the reward of diligence and praying without cease. Making melody within our hearts continually. 
allow us to be able to re be remembered in the word that we may be able to be even as it is in that moment, Father God, and even speak with grace within our speech toward one another. Father God, in the mighty name of Jesus, we glorify you and magnify you in Jesus' mighty name. Amen, amen, and amen. God bless you all. I love you, I love you, I love you. I know for a fact that God loves you. Let's pray to be to God that we can love each other as much, if not more, than he has loved us and continues to love us. God bless you. Glory, glory, hallelujah.